Today we're looking at Robert Smalls. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Robert Smalls was born into slavery but rose to become a member of the United States House of Representatives. But furthermore, Smalls is responsible for possibly one of the most daring escapes from slavery in American history. Smalls was born April 5, 1839 in Beaufort, South Carolina. His enslaved mother Lydia served in the house of John McKee in Beaufort. It is not known who his father was, but by the age of 19, Smalls' owner, John McKee, had agreed to allow Robert to go to Charleston to be rented out for work. Again, an example of how slave owners treated enslaved people as property. Once in Charleston, Robert worked several different jobs and was allowed to only keep $1 a week of his wages. McKee took the rest. Many of Small's jobs involved working in and around Charleston Harbor, and by the time the first shots of the Civil War were fired at Fort Sumner in Charleston Harbor in April of 1861, Small's knew the harbor arguably better than anyone else. It was during this time in Charleston that Small's also met his wife, Hannah, who was also an enslaved person working in a Charleston hotel. Small's had hoped to purchase Hannah's freedom, but simply could not get enough money. Shortly after the Civil War began in April of 1861, the Union, or the North, put up a blockade of ships to block any trade or supplies from reaching southern ports. Having a lot of experience working in the harbor and steering ships, in the fall of 1861, Robert Smalls was assigned to steer the CSS Planter, which was under the command of Confederate General Roswell Ripley and was captained by Confederate uh, Officer C.J. Rayleigh. Smalls was, was to steer the planter on various missions up and down the Carolina coast, but in April of 1862, Smalls began to devise a plan for escape, and he soon shared his plan with other enslaved people who had been forced to work aboard the planter. On the evening of May 12, 1862, the planter was docked near General Ripley's headquarters in Charleston Harbor. The white crew members went ashore to spend the night and left Smalls and the enslaved crew members on board the ship to spend the night there, which was a fairly common routine for them. Before, the, before Captain Rayleigh left the boat, Smalls asked if the men's families could visit them on the boat, and Rayleigh ag agreed as long as they were off the boat before curfew. The men's families joined them, and then later some of the men pretended to leave the boat to give the appearance that the people were actually, you know, getting off the boat before curfew. At 3 a.m. on the morning of May 13, 1862, Smalls put on a uniform and a straw hat to make himself look like Captain Rayleigh. He then told the other men to hoist a Confederate flag over the ship, and he took the helm of the planter, and the boat began to slip away into the night. Smalls did not put the boat into, I guess, full speed, but rather slowly steered the ship as to not arouse any suspicion. He steered it towards the Union blockade, but stopped at a wharf along the way to pick up his wife and children. About an hour and a half after starting their escape, they sailed past Fort Sumner at about 4.30 a.m. All along the way, there were other Confederate ships and checkpoints, but Smalls gave the correct signals and even imitated Captain Rayleigh's manners so to not arouse any more suspicion from these other Confederate ships. As the planner made its way past Fort Sumner, the men took down the Confederate flag and hoisted a white bedsheet Smalls' wife had brought. The boat approached the Union blockade ship, the USS Onward, which prepared to fire, but then saw the white flag. Union sailors boarded the planter, and Smalls asked for a Union flag to hoist above the ship. The escape had been a success. Smalls had led 16 enslaved people to freedom, but not only that, the planter had weapons on board, which the Union now had possession of. Smalls immediately became a hero in the North, with Northern newspapers reporting about the daring escape. After the escape, Smalls served in the Union Navy. With his extensive knowledge of the Charleston Harbor area, he was an in invaluable to the Union war effort. Interestingly, Smalls continued to pilot the planter, as now it was used for the Union, for Union missions against Confederate targets. By 1864, Smalls and the planter were supporting General William Tecumseh Sherman's push towards Savannah, Georgia. And then as the war came to an end in 1865, the planter was used by the Freedmen's Bureau to aid in their effort to help former enslaved people. 
After the war, Robert Smalls moved back to Beaufort, South Carolina and actually bought the house of his former master, John McKee. In 1868, Smalls was elected to the South Carolina State Legislature, and then in 1874, he was elected to the United States House of Representatives, where he fought for more rights for African Americans. Robert Smalls died February 23, 1915 in Beaufort, South Carolina at the age of 75. The life of Robert Smalls is truly an inspiring story of a man who was born into the worst possible of conditions, had the courage to make a daring escape, and then fought for the rights of those who were denied rights. So with that, hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.